Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Monday. It is the 19th day of December 2022. I hope you're all safe and healthy today and that your family is also safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. I hope you had a good weekend. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and the first responders who are out here every day trying to save lives. Blessings also upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets, and sidewalks, and parks, and highways, and stairwells clean. Blessings also, double blessings, on those that make deliveries for our convenience. And, and so, double blessings on those that are out here every day trying to help rescue, recover, and deliver the teenagers and the children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims that are also out here that are victims of pornography and child pornography. The victims that are also victims of prostitution and child prostitution. Sex slavery and human trafficking. That happens all day, every day in every state of the United States. Double curses on the perpetrators. Double curses on the profiteers. And double curses on all the perverts that make this industry happen. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and mostly children even now in December with our roofs over their heads and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions and blessings upon them, theirs is the kingdom. Now, there was a basketball game last night. The New York Knicks won their seventh consecutive game last night, beating the Indiana Pacers. And what we had thought yesterday, we did our podcast yesterday, and we thought it was going to be a closely contested tight game. And to me, This is one of the best wins of the season for the Knicks at this point. And the reason is I alluded to this multiple times earlier that I told you all that as the year goes on, the Knicks would get better. Okay, I didn't I didn't never think they were going to win seven straight games. So they're really going better. And we're going to talk about the functions of that in a second. But. Um, as the year goes on, they would get better. Some of the people that were tripping, and I mean jumping off the roof, tripping, talking about trade RJ, RJ's a bust, RJ not, and blah, 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 need to shut up because RJ Barrett is doing what we thought he would do. He's coming up into the second iteration of his career, moving into all-star type game plan. Get game plan. Last Yesterday, he finished with 24 points on 10 of 19 shooting, four boards, five turnovers, but some tremendous bully ball yesterday going against Indiana. Tremendous bully ball. And so um, y'all should, all your RJ haters need to shut up for a minute, okay? And then the same with the Mitchell Robinson haters. All y'all talking about this stretch five BS. And let, oh, we need, we need Miles Turner. Mitchell Robinson, 13 boards, five on offensive end, 10 rebounds, four block shots, and I don't know how many altered shots. He is the anchor of the New York defense. And that brings me to the point today. I keep telling y'all, so many of y'all focus too much on offense. Y'all are more fans and, you know, bless y'all. Y'all basketball fans, y'all NBA fans, I get you. You want the flash and dash and all of that. But championships are won on the grit and grind, y'all. Championships are won getting stops when you need to get one. And that's what I liked about yesterday's game. It was an ugly game as far as beauty is concerned. The Knicks only had 13 assists the whole game. They had 16 turnovers. It was a grinded out ugly game. But there are elements of what will become in the future a championship team in what we saw yesterday. Let's go over them. First, they started getting stops when they needed them. Okay? When you're a championship team to win in the playoffs, what separates champions from everybody else is the champions get stops when they need them. The Knicks were doing that against Indiana yesterday. Also, we have a point guard. Okay, the Knicks have been without a real point guard for a long time. And now they signed Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson... As we talked about also, this the New York Knicks is his team. And he's now, he's getting acclimated to running his own team. This is the first time as a pro he's had this situation. In high school, he ran his team. In college at Villanova and winning two chips there, he had his team. But when he went to Dallas, it was Luka Doncic. As it should be, it was Luka Doncic's team. Okay, it was Luka's team. And Jalen, when Luka was out or hurt, 
you would see flashes of what it would be like if it was his team and they were successful. Now, he's not Luka Doncic, but you obviously saw the leadership qualities that you would want to see in your point guard, in your lead guard. He had them, obviously. And so now with the Knicks, this is the first time he's running his team. And so having given, been given the keys by Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau, he needs time to get acclimated to driving this car. Okay? And it takes time. And here we are at about the 30 game mark and it's starting to show. Kid already showed us that he's one of the toughest New York Knicks we've ever seen. He's already shown that. I mean, in terms of toughness, uh, this cat's on a level of very few players. I mean, he's extremely, extremely tough. Okay, So we already seen that. But now we're seeing the clutch gene. We're seeing the, the you know, what, you know, the reading the floor gene. We're seeing a point guard. And he's fighting like heck on the defensive end. Okay. He really is. Yesterday, um, he was in them passing lanes really nice. And, 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 you know, a lot of times, like yesterday, uh, what did we, they credited Brunson with two steals, but I thought he had more than that. But what it was is when you get nice double teams on the strong side of the floor and you get guys that are covering their ground and keeping their man in the ball in sight. That's where you can open up opportunities when they try to pass the ball to the weak side where you get guys playing the passing lane and they get steals. And that Brunson did that beautifully, uh, at least on two occasions, I saw it. But he's getting that. So this bodes well, obviously, for the Knicks as a, as a team because he's now in 30 games now. He's getting acclimated. He's getting the feel. He knows where everybody likes to be. It's really... And then, of course, again... We have a point guard. Not only do we have a point guard, but that footwork that he, I think I can say very, very confidently, he has elite footwork. His footwork is elite. Okay. Um, DeMar DeRozan, like I said, prior to now, I would always say DeMar DeRozan has footwork like I've, you know, seen on very few players. Kobe Bryant also had footwork. Kobe Bryant is, is probably the Mount Rushmore of footwork. Uh, him and Jordan in the NBA history, but um, now Brunson really. I mean, he's not six six like like Jordan or or six 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 seven or like Kobe. He's only like six one. He has short arms. He don't have no seven foot wingspan. But he shows you with tremendous craftiness and footwork what you can accomplish. You know, against bigger players, and he does it every night. And now he's getting more acclimated, more in tune with his team more comfortable in his role, and it's just going to get better for the Knicks uh, as a result of that. <clears throat> the other thing that I like is what teams do that are champions. They hit big foul shots down the stretch. Julius Randle sealed this deal for us yesterday. Now, Randle... 25 and 14, he seems to put up those numbers no matter how well he actually plays, right? He's a 2010 guy, so even if he's playing terribly, he's going to do 2010. But when he's playing within the team concept and he's being efficient as he was yesterday, and he was very efficient yesterday, um, he becomes all NBA level player, really, all NBA level player. And, and as I said at the beginning of the season, and I think all of y'all agree with me, the issue with Randall wasn't his physical talent. It's what's here between his ears. And again, when he came out and made, mentioned himself as being selfish last week, that was big time in terms of his mental makeup going forward. It bodes extremely well for the New York Knicks. Um, so, you know, he he yesterday, um, there was a questionable call. I have to say, and, I, and I'm you know mentioning that, um, I have to say this to uh, against on Friday against the Bulls. The refs favored New York Friday night against the Bulls. I'm just telling you. I mean, the Knicks blew them out, but the Knicks, I think the Bulls had in that game um, like a third of the foul shots that the Knicks got. I mean, it was crazy. Like, generally speaking, in an NBA game, you want to see the foul sh the fouls in a pretty even kill, like in an even discrepancy. The Knicks got 32 attempts on Friday night. The Bulls got eight. I didn't mention that before, but I got to be fair. That, that's ridiculous. That, that was bad refereeing. I mean, nobody hacks that much more than the other team, not in the NBA. So 
that was a little thing. And then yesterday, I don't know what happened. I was trying to look at it a third time to see um, what happened <clears throat> at the end when that loose ball foul that caused Julius to be on the line. But that was the game changer right there. I mean, Brunson hit that da that three. I want to call it a dagger three because we still were behind. But he hit a big-time three, and then he had a big-time steal to make it a one-point game in the fourth quarter with, with about a minute and a half left. But then um, Julius got tangled up with somebody, and they reviewed the play, and the call stood. So Julius was on the line, and that's when we took the lead. Uh, he hit, he nailed the two foul shots, and then he they fouled him again. He nailed the foul shots at the end to put it away. That was big time. Um, that was big time. So these things is what made this game to me. And I thought this game would be tough because Indiana, even though they haven't been on an upswing recently, they would earlier this season they were, and I expect them to be better um, going. You know, coming down the stretch with Carlisle is a really good coach. They got a really good team. I mean, um, Halliburton is leading the league in assists, and um, he had 10 again last night in that game. Uh, Neesmith is coming into his own. Uh, yeah, they, they really, and, they, and they're pretty young, a lot of young guys on their team. Miles Turner is what they've had on a trading block. You know, like I said, you know, that one game where he went off with all them threes, Mitch Rob was like 300 pounds. You know, he ain't that no more. You know, so yesterday he ended up two of ten from the field, two of eight from three, and, and zero for four from the free throw line. And and he had his first three, and I thought to myself, be happy because that's your last one, you know. Because <laughs> Mitch Rob won't be, be on your behind, and he was. Mitch Rob was snatching rebounds over that boy and flushing it in his face. I mean, that's what I call grown man stuff. Like, I'm just going to grown man snatch this ball from you, son, and then I'm going to flush it on you. That's what Mitch Rod was doing yesterday. So all the people talking about we need to stretch five and we need to trade for Miles Turner. Y'all need to go back to NBA 2K and go follow the Nets. Because, no, we don't. We don't need Mitch. We don't need Miles Turner. We don't need a stretch five. We got what we need. The anchor of a grinding defense that gets stops when we need them. That's what we need. Okay. And somebody that can that can that can put pressure on the rim, as Timberdoe is always saying, put pressure on the rim, protect the rim, which is the part of Thibodeau's defense. Like I said, he likes protection at the point of attack with rim protection. And he calls it building out. So he starts with rim protection and he builds out. And then he gets the perimeter protection as well. And he gets that. And obviously we have seen now, since he has made the change in the rotation and went to a more defensive-oriented lineup, look what happened. You know, this is seven straight wins. You know. So the Knicks are just percentage points behind Philly in terms of the fifth seed. <clears throat> Both Philly and New York are four and a half games from the top of the East. And both of them are about a game, if I want to say they're about a game and a half from the fourth seed. Let me just see that. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yeah, they're a game and a half from the fourth seed Brooklyn Nets, who have won six straight. Right now, the Knicks are the hottest team in the NBA. Um, right now, they won seven straight. You've had the Nets, which was right there. Orlando actually won six straight, and the Nets have won six straight. Orlando is playing good since they put Bowl Bowl into the starting line. So... Uh, um, I'm not saying they're a threat to come and take the, the East, but with Markel Fultz back, uh, watch out for them because they're going to be much improved as this season goes on. And I expect if Markel Fultz can stay healthy, they can be pretty dangerous next year. And of course, Paulo Bontero is good, but they've won six straight. The Knicks have won six straight. I mean, seven straight. And Brooklyn has won six straight. So the Knicks are the hottest team right now in the NBA. Um, the Philadelphia 76ers play tonight, and they have won um, four straight already. They play tonight. Who are they playing tonight? They are playing Toronto, and I'm hoping Toronto beats them tonight. So they play Toronto tonight. Orlando plays the Leprechaun in them tonight. So I'm hoping Orlando, that's why I mentioned Orlando. I'm hoping they beat Atlanta, and then I'm looking for Toronto to beat Philly. That would give the Knicks the fifth seed. Without, without any comp right there. We had the fifth seed all to ourselves. So <clears throat> we're looking for that. Um, but the, the New York Knicks are playing, uh, it's, it's an understatement to say they're playing the best basketball of the season right now. Um, again, it's a function of several things, of 
Jalen Brunson getting more acclimated, RJ Barrett taking that next step, Randall playing, you know, within his mental capacity, you know, staying within himself mentally and staying within the team concept. He turned the ball over a couple of times yesterday doing some old Randall stuff, but you know, you're going to get that in a 48 minute game. The cat played almost 40 minutes yesterday. For the most part though, he was getting rid of that basketball. He was making quick decisions with the ball. And when he made him, he was decisive and he was being strong going to the hole. So, you know, you can't ask for much more. I mean, Julius played a tremendous game. He didn't shoot the ball well from three, two of eight. But see, when he's playing the right way, that don't matter. Okay, when he's playing the right way and he's making quick decisions with the basketball and he's going strong to the hole and he's rebounding like he got 14 yesterday, the other stuff don't matter. And he was playing, of course, really with the rest of the team, really good defense. Grimes only scored six points, but if you didn't see the game, you don't understand. Grimes was focused, and this is the thing about Quentin Grimes. He's a threat. From the three-point line. He's a threat to score offensively. But he's also a playmaker. And as far as I remember. At University of Houston. To me he was the best rebounding two guard in the country that year. But he came out. And that he brings to the pros. He's really good rebounding at 6'5". From the two guard position. He had six rebounds yesterday. And really what the thing about him. Aside from all I just said. He figures out. What does he. Quentin Grimes need to do to help the New York Knicks win that night. Last night, it was the defense, and it was rebounding and playmaking. He made a beautiful dish to RJ um, when he drove baseline, and RJ cut high IQ play from both guys, and RJ gets the and one. Um, that's Quentin Grimes. And so he, it's an IQ, it's defense, um, it's shooting. He brings the whole package. And the thing about him... We know he hasn't even gotten close to the, you know, to scratching of where he's going to actually be as a player. He has still got a lot of upside. That bodes well for the New York Knicks. Quentin Grimes is 22. R.J. Barrett is 22. Mitchell Robinson is 24. Julius Randle is 28. Brunson is 26. Then, of course, you know, the deuce card came off 13 minutes. He played lockdown defense. Didn't shoot the ball that well, but with, with Deuce, the defense is almost like in football. If it was like football, it would be like Darrell Reavers. You know, like that side of the field, they called it Reavers Island. Why did they do that? Because whatever wide receiver was on that side of the field was getting shut down. So that was taken, that, that option was taken away. That's what happened when Deuce is on the floor. That side of the floor is shut down. Okay. Now, some people like he got beat once, I think, on a on a, a drive. I think it was by Neesmith. But for the most part, everybody everybody has to earn everything they get against Deuce McBride, and they know they're in. They got hell to pay when when they got it, when he comes in the game, and that's all the difference in the world. Then, of course, quickly again did not shoot well. But the thing again that I like about quickly is he positively affects the game. When you see Quickly's plus minus numbers, they're always plus. And they're always significantly plus, like plus five, plus six, plus seven, because he significantly affects the game positively because he's a threat. He can he's a three-level scorer. Okay. And his defense has greatly improved. I mean, as you would expect over a Tom Thibodeau team, this is being his third year with Tom Thibodeau, his defense has greatly improved. So you add him and McBride together. They are plus 40-something, man. I mean, they are really good together, those two. And so, and then Superman, Jer Jericho Sims, who I call Superman because he could fly through the air. He only played nine minutes, scored four points, but he also gave them good minutes on the defensive end, rebounding. Um, quick threw him a beautiful um, alley oop, man. I mean, shoot. It was good. Hartenstein, you know, like I said, Hartenstein played 16 minutes. He's hustler. He's the thing about Hartenstein, you know, you're getting 100 percent effort every night, every minute he's on the floor. And that's that's worth something. But talent wise, to me, Sims is just better. You know, he's just better. You know, he may not be the stretch five, but he's much better. I, I, but it is what it is. The cream rises to the top right now. He's playing um, Sims in that four spot. And OK, so they went eight deep yesterday because Sims only played nine minutes. So they really went eight man deep yesterday, the eight man rotation yesterday. And and some of you keep asking questions like, well, Tom, is he going to wear his players out? This is this is how you win, baby. Come on. 
That's how you win. What you think? This ain't college. You ain't trying to rest nobody. You're trying to win. <laughs> we trying to win. Let like the Lakers rest LeBron over behind and see if save him for the playoff. We trying to win. All right? And that's what Tibbs is doing. The thing is that bothered me previous season was that he was trying to win with these old vets that we had instead of using these cats now. But now all of these young dudes, your Jericho Simpsons, your Miles McBrides, your Quentin Grimes have won Tibbs' trust, and he's riding with them. And that's why we won seven straight. So um, no matter what happens going forward, brethren, let us not forget. This real show, we here. You know, like we said two years ago, we could say it again with the Knicks. We here. Okay? We here. So, um, that ain't going to change nothing. Dude, you can't win seven straight games in the league and not be good. Period. End of story. You just can't. Okay? So, the Knicks are good. Period. They, and they're going to get better. Okay? We're at game 30 right now. And at, at game 30, they're 17, 13. And they're going to get better. So next up is Golden State. Golden State just beat um, Toronto last night by 16 because Jordan, without Stephen Curry, because Jordan Poole dropped 43. Jordan Poole dropped 43 last night. So you know, okay? But you're going to run into a problem. Q-Dog, Q-Dog, and the deuce card. He's going to have a problem. <laughs> So it's going to be tough, but I, I like our chances. So we're going to talk about that. But I, I, I thought this was going to be a close game. It was a close game, but it was a beautiful grind out win. This is a 90 style grind out win for the New York Knicks. So listen, y'all can smile, man. Relax and enjoy what your team is doing. The New York Knicks are playing high level ball. And I'm going to tell you right now, even though they have won seven straight, they're not yet playing their best ball. They're going to be playing their best ball in about 10 more games, 12 more games, as long as everybody stays healthy. Um, the, Knicks, the, Knicks, the Knicks are looking pretty good this year. Right now, uh, they're at a 50, almost 57% winning percentage. If you look at that, 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 uh, that um, projects to a 46-win season. Right now, so they're on pace right now to win 46 games. Um, and you know, a couple of weeks ago, they were on pace to be 500, and everybody was tripping as if that was where they were going to end up. I don't hear them noises anymore because I told you they're going to get better. You got to, anyway, but yeah, they're on project right now for 46 wins. That may go up, as I said, I'm looking at a minimum of 45 wins this year for the Knicks. Um, we could definitely go higher than that, no doubt about it, but uh, we'll see as we go forward. You know, there's going to be bumps and bruises along the road. It's still a long season. We still got 52 games left in this season. So, you know, don't worry about that. But I'm very confident in the depth of our team at every position. Look at Sims playing the four spot. So, we're pretty good. You know, we're pretty good. So, next is Golden State. That's another dog fight. Jordan Poole and them coming to the garden. No Stephen Curry. But Jordan Poole is really good also. So, here we go. Y'all enjoy your Monday. Hello.